Hi, this is Anil and welcome to the video tutorial on Java programming. So in the previous tutorials, you know, we have learned about the arrays, you know, the single dimensional arrays, you know, we have created the arrays, we have stored the values in that arrays and also, you know, we have copied the elements of one array to another array. So, you know, when you create an array, you know, a single dimensional array, for example, let's say marks, what you can do is you can store the similar elements in it. So here in this marks array, I can store the information of one student in it. For example, you know, the marks of one student, uh, 22, 55, 44, 77. So like this. So now here we are storing the marks of one student. What if you want to store the marks of multiple students? So at that time, what we can do is we can use multidimensional arrays. So these multidimensional arrays are nothing but an array inside another array. I know it is confusing, but you know, after this tutorial, it's going to be clear. All right. So here, let's think of this multidimensional array as a table. We're going to have some rows and we can have some columns. For example, here, you guys can see I have created a table. Let's say in this rows, we're going to store the marks of the student. We're going to store the mark of first student in this row. Let's say 22, 44 or 55. And here, you know, this first column is going to be for the subject one or, you know, the marks of the subject one. The second column is going to contain the mark of the subject two and the third one is going to contain the marks of the subject three. And similarly, in the second row, I'm going to store the mark of the student two. So the student two is going to have the mark for the first subject as uh, 44, you know, 65, 78, you know, any values. And in the third row, I'm going to store the mark of the student three. And uh, let's say, 48, 96, 100. So here, this row is gonna represent the students. You know, if we have two rows, then it's gonna mean that we are storing the information or the marks of two students. And if we have five rows, then it, it's gonna mean that, you know, we are storing the marks of five students. And here, the columns are gonna represent the subjects. And if we have three columns, then we will be storing the marks of three subjects. And if we have six columns, then we can be storing the marks of six subjects. And now let's think of this in terms of arrays. So now let's consider this first row. Here, this 22 is the first element. So if we created an array to store this, then our first element will be at the index zero. And then we have 44. This is the second element. So this will be in the index one. Then we have 55, which is the third element and it will be in the index two. And think of this as another array. So here also, you know, the index is going to start from zero, one and two. And for this third row also, the index is going to be from zero, one and two. Now we have three separate arrays here. So what we can do is we can combine them and we can form a table. So let's say this is going to be our first row and it will be at the index zero because you know, we are talking about the arrays and index always starts from zero. Then the second row, it will be at the index one. Then the third row, which will be at the index two. All right. Now we're going to see how to create a two dimensional array in our program so that we can store this information. So to create a two dimensional array in our program, first we need to specify the type of data that we're going to store in that array. So here we're going to store the integer values. So that's why it's going to be int. And then, you know, when we create a single dimensional array, we can have single pair of square brackets. But here we are talking about the two dimensional array and that's why we can have two pairs of square brackets, you know, opening and closing square bracket, then again, opening and closing square bracket. And then the variable name, let's say students marks, students marks. 
then add the semicolon so here you know you can use this square bracket uh, after this data type or you know after this uh, variable or the array name so it doesn't matter all right so here we are declaring a two dimensional array the next thing that we need to do is we need to allocate the memory so that we can uh, store some values in that allocated array so to do that we're gonna write the array name you know which is gonna be students mark marks equal to new then the data type which is gonna be int then we can have two pair of square brackets because it's a two dimensional array and now here we need to specify the values so now let's think of this two dimensional array as a table you know that i have drawn here so in the first square brackets we need to specify how many rows that you want so here you know we want one two three rows and that's why i'm gonna specify that here so it's gonna be three and then how many columns that you want we want one two three so it's gonna be three this is it this is gonna create a two dimensional array where we can store the information like in rows and columns or you know just like the way it is in the table and you know after this statement all the array elements are going to contain the default value of zero that's because you know when you create an array in java you know they will be initialized with their default values depending on the type of data that is stored in that so here our array elements are going to be of type integers and that's why you know they will be containing a default value zero so if our array was string then it was containing the null value similarly for different data types we have different different default values all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you is you know how to store some values in this two dimensional array and how to access that so now let's say you want to store the information in this first cell so at that time what we can do is we can access this first cell by using the row index you know which is uh, zero you know we are talking about the first row and then the, the column index you know which is also zero so here to refer to this cell we need to write the array name first that's gonna be students marks and then we're gonna have the zero here and again zero and then assignment operator and then the value let's say i think i have stored 22 there so let's save the same number and then i'm gonna copy this and let's say now you want to store the value in this cell so here this is in the third row which will be at the index 2 you know the row index is 2 here and then the column index is going to be 0 and 1 this one so this cell will be available at the index 2 1 so i'm going to write here it's going to be 2 and 1 and let's say a value 96 all right similarly you know we can access the other locations or you know the other cells in this table so here in our program you know this 22 will be stored in the first array at the index 0 then this 96 will be stored in the third array you know the index is 2 because it is starting from 0 and at the index 1 so it's gonna be here you know the index is 2 row index and then the column index is 1 now we can access the elements stored in this two dimensional array just like the way we were accessing it here so i'm just going to use the system.out.println and i'm just going to refer the students marks and i'm going to refer the position 0 and 0 and i'm just going to copy this statement and paste it two more times and then we're gonna refer two comma one and then we're gonna refer let's say 
this cell you now which is going to have the row index as 1 and the column index as 2 so it's going to be 1 and 2 I'm going to save this and I'm going to run this program now you guys can see we have the value 22 and this 0 comma 0 and uh, uh, 96 in this 2 comma 1 and then we have the value 0 and this 1 comma 2 that's because you know the default value you know we haven't assigned any particular value to that uh, location or that cell and that's why you know it just prints out the default value so this is it guys this is about the two dimensional array in java i know it is a bit confusing topic but these two dimensional arrays are very very helpful so make sure that you understand this concept very well and uh, thank you for watching source code will be available in my web blog learninglateducation.blogspot.com and i'll see you in the next tutorial